All right, so here's the problem I'm having with this engine right here. I forgot which ones it is, but these parts right here, this little bevel, doesn't look like they line up. And a lot of them, they, and a lot of them, they're not like smooth right here. They have like little ledges. This one's probably one of the smoother ones. Not sure if the camera could pick that up, but there's like a ledge right here. And a lot of them on the side, it feels like, like they have the caps mismatched on there. I, I kind of have a feeling that they've been mismatched. Because some of them are very smooth. Like this one's almost perfect. The side's not exactly perfect. And the way you do this, the way you get this sorted out is, I don't know, that's why I haven't built the engine yet. I'm sure I could probably uh, take them to a machine shop and they probably have a way to do it. Like maybe they measure to make sure it's round or maybe they just resize them. I don't know. But at this moment I'm kind of stuck on it. One thing, I do have this other 305 right here that somebody actually numbered them. Somebody actually numbered the rods and rod caps. And it was running in somebody's van I think. So I know the engine was working. It's actually been sitting up for about, I don't know, probably 15 years it's been in this garage just sitting here. I'm not going to use that gear, but I put this on here. And I can actually turn the crank a little bit. I also sprayed around the, the inside. I sprayed WD-40 on all the cylinders, and it's, it's really not that rusty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pistons and rod out of this engine and look at the crank and see if it's in better shape than that other one. You see, nothing ever goes right around here. That's how come I never get anything done. The idea was to build a turbo kit off these headers that go right here, that's, you know, that's going to be in the front. And you see how close it is on this, on this engine stand? I can't even do that. So that, that was pointless for me to even put this on there. And... Uh, the crankshaft of this engine, the roller block that I had another video on, the one that those pistons came out of, the crankshaft has a lot of wear on it. It's going to have to go to the machine shop. So everything just kind of got complicated. Because it, the, the only reason I got that engine was because I was told that, oh, it, it was a running engine. They took it apart. It was probably good. Blah, 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 blah. You probably just need to polish the crank up and put it back together and it's good. But that's not the case. The crankshaft is bad. And I think the rod caps are mismatched. I'm not saying you can't build it. I'm just saying that I have to, I'm going to put that one on the back burner. And if this, this motor is better, in better shape, I'll just build this one instead. All right, so the easiest way to get the pistons out, if you don't have an engine stand, I have it sitting up on some blocks. That way I could spin the crank. And for the pistons to come out, you got to have the, one of the rod journals directly down. Just pretty much centered up and then to take the bolts loose oh yeah you got to make sure you uh, keep everything in the same spot these have already been numbered so I don't have to worry about that and more importantly, you need to make sure you do not mismatch the rod caps. And you also have to keep the main caps in the same place. That's very important. you got to number them. All right, so take these off. So you got to get the rod cap off now. I would take something that's soft like a wood hammer. Handle. That's not good. Don't do that.
it took way more effort than it should have. Okay, so I know I brought up these pistons earlier, this set of rods. My suspicions are actually correct. Check this out. On the side, you can't even catch your nail on it. Maybe barely, but that might... Barely, but not even hardly. Okay, on the rods, this little chamfer, it matches, it matches up. But on the inside, it's not even catching my nail. I can't, I can't even feel it. Right, the joint, the split. And like I was talking about these, all of them, the chamfer doesn't match up. And you, can, you could catch your nail on here. And even the side to side, you could catch your nail on there. See that all of them, all of them are like that. They're, none of this stuff matches up. But on the on the rod I just pulled out of that other engine that I'm that somebody actually numbered and more than likely built it the right way a long time ago. The chamfers match. You can't even hardly. I kind of caught my nail on it, but it's not it's not near as, as much as the other one. This one's almost perfect. This side's almost perfect. Hmm. Interesting. So I just kind of confirmed that. You know, this has been bugging me. This is why I haven't built the engine yet. I really don't know what to do about that. Maybe try to miss. I, I don't even know. I'm just gonna leave them here till something. Till I think of something. These rods are supposed to interchange. I know this is later model stuff, and somebody might say that I'm not comparing, you know, equal stuff, but. I, I, I just couldn't, the main thing, I just couldn't live with that, the side part, because I know that these things, they, they ride up against each other, and they're supposed to have a clearance, and they're supposed to be smooth. So I'm going to say that these are supposed to be like that. You know, they're supposed to be smooth and matched up like these older rods. Anyway, let's move on to something else. I promise I've done several engines like that. But it works better setting up on a table because I couldn't see what I was doing. So now I got it sitting on its side. So I do one close up to see what I'm doing. Just take it loose. You know, just be careful, never hit the threads. Try not to be too rough with it. It really the, the cast really don't have much holding it on. They just have to come off real straight. That one was was giving me problems. I don't know why, but a lot of times you could just kind of like tap them a little bit on the sides and they'll come out like that. Yeah, it has, it has to come straight up. Be careful not to hit the scratch the crank with the threads that's one of the boards that has kind of a lot of rust in it you see all that rust that one the cap came off easy but it didn't come out of the bore that easy. Okay, so I know in my previous video I'm talking about the, the roller block I have, the one that had the mismatched caps. That's these bearings right here. I know in my previous video, one of my previous videos, I said that that these had normal wear on them because they're not really like chewed up. It's just kind of you know, you could just see normal wear marks, but check this out. You know, I'll miss some stuff, you know, I'm not perfect, but notice how it has that wear mark. They all have an extra wear mark right there. Right there.
and then here goes the ones that that I that I'm saying had the you know the numbers the rod caps were matched on the older engine that I just took the pistons out of. The where it, it's all the way to the copper colored part. It has different layers. I don't know what they make them out of, but but you know, I don't even know if these might not have a copper layer. I don't even know. But these are worn more evenly. They don't they don't have no weird wear marks in this area. I'm not going to bore you with all this speculation and stuff because it's kind of dumb because I wasn't actually there when any of this happened. But this engine was pulled apart for a reason. This is the, this is the one that had the mismatched caps. It still has the lines across it. So I'm going to say that engine didn't last very long before somebody pulled it because it probably started rattling or, the, or knocking or maybe lost oil pressure because the crank was chewed up. And it's probably because of mismatched, you know what I mean? Like that cap being a little bit misaligned is probably why it has that. It's probably why it has that wear mark on there. Anyway, I'm done playing uh, Mr. Detective. So what I came up with is that that old school 305 is a better candidate for a rebuild because I don't even know how to, I don't even know what to do about this. This is cheap stuff anyway, so I could just throw it all in the junk. I don't even care, really. And one more thing. On that last piston that I just now, that when I was kind of hitting on it, like in here, I was kind of being a little bit more rough than you should be with it because, you know, sometimes you just got to get it done. This was kind of stuck, and when you hit them like that, you can easily crack the, the lands. Maybe not easily, but you know what I mean. You could actually crack a piston and ruin them. These are probably no good anyway, so I'm just saying that probably looks bad, but I just had to get them out. Maybe, maybe it would have been a better idea to maybe take some uh, sandpaper or, or steel wool and clean that rust out better. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of the pistons out the same way I did that one, the last two. Oh yeah, and this one also... Just like the last one, the bevel part matches up very good. You, can bear, you can't even hardly catch your nail on it. The sides match up. All this stuff seems a lot, all this stuff seems a lot smoother and, and, you know, like it's supposed to be. You know, I, I'm just saying, that other engine, the Roller 305, the one that has mismatched caps, you, you, you can tell there's a problem there. Anyway, so let's move on to something else. I guess I'll show me taking out another one. Just go ahead and take this thing and spin it, spin it. Do where you're. Spin it to where the rod journal is straight up. Take the bolts loose. Remember, don't mismatch this. Mine are numbered. If yours aren't, it would be a good idea to take a stamp and stamp them right here. That's, that's a common practice. And just work it off nice and easy. And just kind of tap it to kind of work it loose. concrete like that and repeat eight times all right I'm gonna pull the crank out real quick all you gotta do is take off these bolts the main caps remember these have to be in order and the arrows point forward when you reassemble it but here goes a pro tip real quick in order to check a crank if it has a ridge right here you already know it's worn. That's most likely going to have to be machined when they check it because you can feel it right there. I mean, of course you would want to check it with the mic, but that's kind of a dead giveaway if it's going to be good or not. Anyway, let me take these bolts out real quick.
I was setting them down, well, I got them set in an order. So as soon as I take the crank out, I'm gonna put them right back in place and not mix them up. And now the crank comes out. All right, I'm at the end of this video right now. I will be making more videos on that engine, trying to get it together. But first, I got to get it checked out because nobody just pulls an engine for no reason. Uh, who knows? Maybe it's a junk block. I don't know. I don't see anything wrong with it so far. But uh, I'll get to that later. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, please like and subscribe. The end.